Hello and welcome. Today I have a Lazy Boy rocker recliner on the bench. This is an electric unit and the style number is P10515. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a couple of the mechanism parts on this unit. But before we get to that, I just want to show you how this operates real quick. Lazy Boy makes two versions of this power recliner. One has a hand control and this one as you see it has activation buttons. There are four buttons here. The two on the bottom are for opening and closing the footrest and the top two are for the back tilt. And if you want both of those to operate at the same time you have to activate both the activation buttons at the same time. Okay, so that's how the chair operates. Let's get to the repair. We're going to be removing the motor clevis mount. That's this little part here. It fits on top of this actuator for the footrest. It has two holes in the side for connecting pins. And also this drive toggle connector. It has a hole in the back for a connecting pin. The pins look like this. There's one long and one shorter. And they are held on with these little clips. So the first thing you want to do, you remove the back of the chair and turn the bottom of the chair upside down like I have here. Then plug in the power and you want to position these motors so that you can pull the pin out without running into another part. So I've already done that. I've already got the positioning down that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the short pin out. There's the pin and clip. And that allows me to remove the drive rod connector. Now notice there's grease here. The manufacturer recommends using lithium grease and you, you'll be able to see on the old part exactly where it needs to be greased. Now I'm going to remove the clip and pin that connects the motor clevis mount with the drive rod, the drive toggle, excuse me. There's that pin. There's our motor clevis mount. Now the third part that can also fail is this drive toggle here that slides onto the drive rod. That's a more difficult repair. We're not going to cover that today. So now to reinstall these parts, you want to start first with the drive toggle connector. You want to make sure that this little tab is facing up and you want to start by putting the point or the pencil end into the guide first. Then take your motor clevis mount and mount it to the top of the actuator. Now here you'll probably have to retract the actuator. When you do that you want to be careful. Plug in the unit to make any movement or adjustments you need to and then unplug the unit whenever you have your hands in here and you're working on it. Okay, so I have it retracted all the way. Now one pin connects the drive toggle connector, motor clevis mount, and the actuary. All three. And it can take a little time to line these up. So just be patient. Okay, let's put our clip in. And there we are. We've got the three parts reconnected. Now we have to line up the hole to the drive toggle to this other hole at the motor clevis mount. So I'll have to extend this actuator a bit so they line up. So 
So let's try that. Okay, so now we've got the uh, drive toggle connector attached as well. Now while you have the chair upside down like this, you just want to test it. And make sure everything functions properly. Once you see your setup is good to go, you can go ahead and turn the, unplug the chair, turn it over, reassemble, and then test again when everything is reassembled and you're sitting in the chair. Okay, some final tips on this procedure. Now, it looked pretty simple, like it's just a matter of pulling clips and pins, and really that's all there is to it. You're, however, you're not likely to find it to be that simple in reality. You'll most likely have to adjust that actuator several times when removing pins and reinstalling them. So just be patient and take your time. Also, when these parts break, they can shatter into a number of different shapes and size pieces, sometimes very small bits. So I recommend you order the three parts that can fail on these units, the motor clevis mount, the drive toggle connector, and the drive toggle that's attached to the drive rod. So if any of those parts need to be replaced, you'll have them on hand. And if you don't need to replace all three of those, you'll have some spare parts in the future should you need them. Mm -hmm.